Hey, welcome back guys. A lot of you enjoyed my 100 days in Terraria video, so I'm going to give you another, but this time in expert mode. Expert mode increases the difficulty of the game making monsters and bosses much harder, but it also increases the quantity and quality of drops and items. I'll be sticking with a medium sized world, but choosing the crimson instead since it was corruption last time. Starting off on day 1, I chopped some trees down for wood, just like last time. I then made some wood armor for some defense because monsters will be hitting a lot harder than before. I traveled the right and found a cave. I went down but only to find a single deposit of silver. After I was done mining, I went back up only to find a pinky slime. I spent a long time killing it because I really wanted the gold coins it dropped. After killing Pinky, I kept going right and I found two living trees close to each other. I decided that I would make a house in this area later. I really wanted to keep exploring but it turned to nighttime, and there were so many mobs that I couldn't anymore. I tried killing them but I made a mistake and ended up falling to my death. After respawning, I went to the left and hold myself up until the next morning. On day 2, I got extremely lucky and found an enchanted sword shrine that had the enchanted sword in it. Killing monsters now will be a lot easier since it has decent damage and can also shoot projectiles. I went all the way to the ocean to search for water chests and I found a pair of flippers which granted me the ability to swim. Afterwards I teleported back home and went to the living trees to start building my house. From day 2 to 5, I spent the entire time working on the house, making sure I liked it. I didn't want it to end up like last time, where I had to take down the entire house and remake it. I'm also going to do a lot more fishing as well. On day 5, I started my first fishing quest to catch the fish of Cthulhu. Although I couldn't find it, I fished some crates and got a tsunami in a bottle, which was really nice to have early on. Afterwards, I went down the crimson biome to break some hearts. I got the crimson heart that provided light, making it useful for mining so that I didn't have to put torches down. On day 6, I went underneath my house and found a pyramid. I was trying to find the entrance, but I accidentally mined a block above me that poured sand onto me. I came back and dug some more and finally found an entrance. I opened the chest and got the flying carpet. Afterwards, I went all the way down the pyramid, leading me to my first heart crystal. I decided that I would explore some more to find more life crystals before I fought the Eye of Cthulhu, since my health was fairly low. I mined my last life crystal and also found the web slinger inside a spider cape, which is essentially a hook. I then teleported back home and upgraded my wood armor to silver and also made a gold pickaxe to be able to mine meteorite. On the night of day 6, the blood moon event then started so I tried killing as many mobs as possible to get the money trove, but I didn't get it this time. On day 7, I built a basic 2 leveled platform arena for the boss, 
and I also went to do some fishing, although I was interrupted by a few mobs. I got pretty lucky though because a lost girl appeared and after killing her, I got 18 gold as well as the metal detector that shows nearby ores and treasure. I got back to fishing and finally found the quest fish I was looking for. I gave it back to the angler and got a gold coin and 5 crate potions. It was time to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. Like last time, I'll be using grenades to take it down. I noticed just how many more eyeballs it shot out than classic mode, but that wasn't a problem. When I got it down to a little over half its health, it went into its second form. The dashes were so much faster that my eyes couldn't keep up with it. I got very close to killing it, but I ended up grenading myself. There was still some time left before day, so I attempted the fight again, but this time I built a house with the nurse nearby to heal myself whenever I needed to. I killed the boss on the second attempt, granting us the Shield of Cthulhu, which gives the player the ability to dash. On day 8, I did some more fishing and I also built an arena at the dungeon to fight Skeletron because that's the next boss I was going to fight. It was time to fight Skeletron so I talked to the old man and began the fight. There were some things I noticed during the fight. Hitting the head only did 1-2 to two damage depending on if you crit or not. It also does the spin attack much more frequently. Skeletron's hands is also able to slow you. I died and was unable to kill even one of its hands. I desperately needed some upgrades so on day 9, I went down the Crimson and started the Brain of Cthulhu boss fight. I didn't have to kill it completely, I just needed to kill the flying orbs around it since they dropped materials for new armor, weapons, and tools. I did this one more time just to be sure I had enough materials. Now that I have enough crimson ore and tissue sample, I made the crimson set that boosts health regeneration. I also made the death ring pickaxe which is able to mine meteorite. We're now into day 10 and I decided to start making the elevator all the way down to hell. While I was doing that, I searched any caves I stumbled upon for loot and more life crystals. I found enough life crystals to max on my health out to 400, and once I made it into hell, I mined some hellstone ore for our next armor and tool upgrade. After returning home, I made the full Molten Armor set that gave a really nice armor boost, along with some Molten weapons and tools. With all the new upgrades I had, I attempted to fight Skeletron again. The fight was going really well, and this time I was able to kill both its arms. I was about to kill it, but I didn't realize that it was about to turn day, so this happened. On day 12, I got back to fishing, and after I returned the quest fish to the angler, I got a fuzzy carrot that summoned a bunny mount.
Having lost to Skeletron twice now is a huge embarrassment to me, considering just how many hours I've put into the game. I return back to the dungeon to settle it once and for all. I finally won against Skeletron, and now I can access the dungeon. While in the dungeon, I took any water candles I came across and opened some gold chests along the way. I found the Cobalt Shield, Aqua Scepter, and even the Shadow Key. On day 13, I went back into the Crimson to finish off the Brain of Cthulhu, because I hate leaving things unfinished. Having the Aqua Scepter helped tremendously. In the second phase, the Brain started to split into four, but all you have to do is hit the one that looks the most visible. Damaging it more though will make all copies of the Brain look more and more opaque. After the Brain of Cthulhu, I went back into Hell to open some shadow chests. I got a lot of good loot such as gold, potions, and weapons. Afterwards, I went back home and organized my inventory. I then expanded the house because I wanted more NPCs to spawn in. I remembered that a meteorite had fallen right after I killed the brain, so I went looking for it. Luckily, it was very close to my house, so I didn't have to travel very far. I mined almost all the meteorite and made the space armor set, along with the space gun. Wearing the full space armor lets you use the space gun without the use of mana. On day 14, I drank a gravitation potion and went searching for some sky islands. I found three and inside the chests were a red balloon, star fury, and also wings. These wings are the only ones you can obtain in pre-hard mode. Day 15, I did some more fishing at a sky lake since the fish I was looking for was there. I also expanded my house by clearing out the other tree, but I was interrupted by a goblin invasion. I made some more rooms around the tree, but I didn't know what I was going to put inside the other tree so I left it empty. Day 16 was just more fishing.
I explored the jungle looking for a beehive to fight the queen bee. I found one so I made a little arena and started the fight. I didn't have any troubles with this boss fight. The reason why I wanted to kill the queen bee was for the bee nades, which is really good against wall of flesh. Shortly after killing the boss, I found the Goblin Tinker just to the right of me. I bought his rocket boots and also the Tinkerer's Workshop to forge my accessories together. On day 18, it was time to fight the Wall of Flesh, so I went back to Hell and made the bridge. I wanted to make it as long as possible since the Wall of Flesh moves more quickly the more health it loses. Going into day 19, I threw the Voodoo Doll into the lava to start the fight. Having Jester arrows are really useful for this fight since you can go through the Hungries and attack it directly. Also, using the Bunny Mount helped a lot too. After killing it, I got a demon heart that increases my accessory slot by 1. We're also in hard mode now so new and harder monsters will start spawning so I have to be a lot more careful. When I got back up, I saw the hollow spawn really close to my house on the left so I dug a deep hole to prevent it from spreading to my house. I wanted to upgrade my wings real quick so I made a house in the jungle and got the witch doctor to be in there to buy the leaf wings from him. And then on day 20 I broke some crimson altars to start spawning in new ores that will be needed to progress through the game. Palladium being the lowest tier and adamantite being the highest tier out of the three. After breaking some altars I went underground and mined a lot of palladium to make the entire armor set and also the pickaxe as well. I only mined enough Orichalcum just for the pickaxe because I wanted to skip the entire armor set and go straight for Adamantite. The Palladium armor set gave life regeneration after you hit an enemy. I fought the Wall of Flesh again on day 21 because I wanted the Sorcerer Emblem from it. Here in this clip, I didn't sh start shooting at the boss right away. Do you want to know why? I wanted to use my laser rifle in the third slot, but I lost it and I was panicking, so I had to resort using my bow and water belt again. I found the laser rifle on the bridge a little bit after though. I killed it and got what I wanted.
On day 22, the traveling merchant arrived and I bought the Zapinator for 50 gold. It turned out to be a really bad investment, but I was curious of what it did. The air is getting colder around you message came up and I knew exactly what that meant. Skeletron Prime, the worst boss to fight out of the other three in my opinion. I stood absolutely no chance at killing him with the current equipment that I had. After opening a wooden crate, I got the enchanted sundial. This item lets you fast forward one day every week, but I won't be using this a lot. Day 23, I mined adamantite and made the full armor set. It gives a nice 20% increased melee and movement speed, but set effects depend on which helmet you wear. While I was inside a cave killing monsters, a bat dropped a mechanical worm. I wanted to see if I could actually kill the destroyer or even get close to killing it, but I wasn't at that point yet. I killed some Icarus stickers in the Crimson to make the Golden Shower which is really good against the Destroyer but even with that I was still unable to get it to even have its HP. I also needed a bookcase to make the weapon so I took one from the dungeon. I expanded the box a bit bigger and I also added honey to regen health, but that also wasn't enough. Even having the nurse with me, I'm still unable to kill the destroyer. At this point, I started to get really frustrated with myself because I just couldn't kill this guy. I needed a better weapon, so I killed a lot of hollow mimics to get the data with Stormbow. And if you pair the bow up with some holy arrows, your damage will be insane. These guys were pretty tanky, so I could only kill about 10 before I actually got the bow. These mimics are strong, fast, and they can even repel attacks. On day 25, I farmed enough souls of light to be able to spawn the hollow mimics up on the surface, so it was much easier to fight them.
Now that I had my Daedalus Stormbow, we went to the hollowed area to kill some unicorns and fairies for the materials needed to make holy arrows. Now I was ready to fight Destroyer again. I was shredding him so hard and it looked like I was going to finally beat it, but a wyvern showed up and messed everything up. I was gonna hold off on the fight until the next night, but for now, I wanted to try my luck and farm a Crimson Key to get the Vampire Knives. Instead, a Crimson Mimic showed up and I killed it to get the Tendon Hook, which is a slight upgrade from my Diamond one. On day 27, I broke some of the platforms because it was allowing Destroyer to reach me when it shouldn't be able to. I also lowered the box area a little bit so that wyverns and harpies couldn't spawn, which made the fight so much easier. I finally killed it and now we can make the mega shark from the souls of might we got from it. So I went to the ocean to kill some sharks for their shark fins. On day 28, I made a really long platform in the sky to fight Skeletron Prime. I did a lot better this time getting it down to half its HP. Day 29, a solar eclipse happened, but I didn't really get anything useful other than gold, which was still pretty nice. After the eclipse, I attempted Skeletron Prime again, but this time I had a strategy. Running all the way to the left side on the unicorn mount I got earlier and then running all the way back to the left. I was fast enough that he could only shoot lasers at me. Right here, I almost messed up because I didn't expect it to come out so fast and do the spinning attack, so I had to drop down. Now, all I needed to kill are the twins. So on day 30, I summoned them, but I accidentally went too fast and got out of range, so they despawned. I summoned the destroyer again because I needed more souls of might since I used up a lot to make the mega shark. 
On day 31, I fought the twins again, but this time I stayed much closer to them. I killed the green one first, that spat out cursed flames, and then the red one that shot lasers. After defeating the twins, I made the pickaxe axe to be able to mine chlorophyte and I also found some life fruits as well. I spent 3 days in the jungle mining chlorophyte so I had quite a lot of it. I wanted to make sure my armor, so I turned a sky island into a mushroom biome to let the truffle NPC spawn in. It's to buy the auto hammer from him to make sure my bars. Day 36, I flattened the area on the left side of my house and made an arena to fight future events like the frost moon and pumpkin moon. Shortly after, a goblin army invaded, but I took care of it with ease. I then went into the jungle and found a plantera ball so I made a big enough arena to be able to maneuver around it. I got it down to about 50% but it was just too strong. The first phase was pretty simple though. All I had to do was dodge the petals it shot out and also dodge plantera itself. But as soon as it got into its second phase I got completely destroyed. At night, I extended the platform in the sky and decided to fight the queen slime for the mount. This boss wasn't too hard, but the slimes that came out of it were kinda annoying. I got the hang of it though after by just running along the platform, just like I did for the twins and Skeletron Prime.
On day 38, I went back into the jungle to attempt to fight Pantera again. But this time, I made a house for the nurse so I could heal whenever I needed to. While searching for the Pantera bulb, I also found some life fruits along the way. After finding the Pantera bulb, I had to make a path all the way up to the arena, because I did not want to fight it at where it was placed. I broke the bulb and I started to move up, but I guess I was moving too fast, so it despawned. Luckily, I found another bulb shortly after. But this time, I made sure I was in range of it. This boss fight was actually really intense. I managed to kill it, but I actually died at the end. Day 39 to 44, after killing Pantera, new monsters appear in the dungeon that gives better items and a lot more gold. So I went there, but I got sniped. I came back and made a somewhat AFK able farm, so I'd stay there until I got what I needed. Some items I was looking for is the Black Belt, Tabbies, Will-O-Wisp, and the Paladin's Shield. Also a lot of Ectoplasm. On day 45 to 48, I searched for some truffle worms to fight Duke Fishron. After finding some, I went to the ocean and made a platform across it. I then started the fight. Everything was going well in the first phase and even the second. But the third phase took me by surprise. Duke Fishon is now able to turn invisible and teleport to you. He also moves extremely fast. On day 49, I made 3 more levels to the arena and fought him again.
I decided that I would hold off on this boss until later on. So I just improved the arena at my house by adding lava, and then we started the frost moon event. I was mainly looking for the chain gun since that was better than the mega shark, but I didn't get it. I did get some pretty good magic weapons though. On day 50, a pirate evasion began. I was able to trap the flying Dutchman on a wall to kill it easily. After that, I went back into the dungeon to get some more gold and items. I also got the bone feather, which I could use to upgrade from my B-Wing. Although there wasn't that much difference in flight time, an upgrade is still an upgrade, so I was still happy with that. Day 51, I went into the temple to fight Golem. A single layer platform is good enough for the spot. I did manage to get the pixel from it, which could mine the altar to summon it again, and even the bricks and traps. I placed the altar above the surface and fought him there. I did this multiple times since he dropped a lot of gold and useful items. On day 52, I did a little bit of cleaning up. I bought a contaminator and got rid of some crimson. While I was doing that, I saw a Martian probe, so I stood underneath it and started the Martian invasion. I teleported back home and killed some UFOs for a chance to get the UFO mount, but that didn't happen.
After the Martian event, I made some improvements to the arena by adding some traps that I took from the temple. I wanted more traps, so I took some more from it. I even added some in the dungeon. While making improvements in the dungeon, I flew too high which allowed monsters to spawn beneath me. Out of all the mobs, it had to be a sniper. Day 58 to 62, I broke the middle section of the arena at the ocean. I added some heart lanterns and campfires to boost health regen and I also equipped the slime mount. Why you ask? Having the slime mount on you lets you fall at a speed which is fast enough to dodge Duke Fishron's third phase. But even with all of this, I still couldn't beat it. I tried over and over again, this time using the nurse, and finally I was able to win. After getting used to him, I fought him some more and I actually got the Razorblade Typhoon, one of my favorite magic weapons to use. Then another Martian probe appeared, so I triggered the Martian event again. Thank you. 
After killing a few Martian officers, I was able to get the UFO mount. I did some more cleaning, but I realized that there was no point. The crimson had already spread too deep underground. Throughout day 64 to 68, I was farming for some truffle worms, but was interrupted by a solar eclipse. I got a few useful items and weapons like the Eye of Cthulhu yo-yo and a broken hero sword that's used to make the Terra Blade. I felt pretty strong at this point, so I wanted to see if I could kill the Lunatic Cultist. His attacks seemed the same, just like in classic mode, so I had no problem with him. After killing him, the four pillars spawned. I only killed two because I wasn't ready to fight Miller just yet. On day 69, <clears throat> Anyways, I thought I'd pick Fishron again to try and get its wings, but that didn't happen. On day 70 to 73, since I ran out of truffle worms, I made a little farm so it can spawn faster. Day 74, I fought Fishron a couple more times and finally got the wings. Day 75, I killed one more pillar, but I wasn't going to fight Moonlord yet. We were ready, but I wanted to fight the Empress of Light first. I actually really enjoyed fighting her because she was a very unique boss. After killing her, she dropped an item that allowed infinite wing flight, so I didn't need the UFO mount anymore.
Day 76, I killed the last pillar to summon Moonlord. I got back home, sat in some honey, and got ready. I was doing pretty well, but I wasn't paying attention to when it shot out the laser beam, so that killed me. I had to kill the cultist again, and also the four pillars, which was the pain to do because the pillar's shield health is a lot more than classic mode. It was time for round 2, and guess what? I choked so hard on this fight. Yep, I died. So back to doing the same process again. And there we go guys, I beat Moonlord on day 77. I wanted to craft Zenith, but holy, I killed Moonlord so many times to the point where I lost count, and yet I still couldn't get the Star Wrath that I needed to make it. And I was about to pass the 40 hours of playtime, so I decided to stop on day 99.
Also, I just wanted to show you guys a little something here. If you have full nebula armor, you can hit monsters from statues to spawn in the power orbs. I did this to make killing Moonlord a lot faster. Alright guys, I finally made it to day 100. Thank you guys so much for all the support for my last 100 days in Terraria video. If you haven't checked that out yet, there will be a link in the description below. Also, which video would you guys like me to make next? I'm thinking either Master Mode or Calamity. So let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and also subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.